Hey guys, so it is uh, June 20th and this morning I tried to do a garden tour and we, London and I literally got rained out. So I will put that clip on here cause it's so cute. Um, but so many of you have been responding to my garden tours that I just thought I would start an Instagram TV series so that I know where they are and so we can backtrack and see how things are going. I have done videos like this that I haven't posted yet earlier in the season. So hopefully I'll get those edited and up. Maybe I can do that next week when I'm on vacation. So it is day 100 of quarantine here at the Yost household. We started quarantine on March 15th and somewhere around then is when I started planning this garden. I decided that we were going to move the garden from where the original owner had it into this space that's a little more tucked away from our chickens and our animals and where our kids play and open up the area that they had the garden in originally. I have learned a little bit about why they had the garden in that area. Um, you can see that this side of my garden is not quite as big and lush as this. It's still growing, it's still doing amazing. And actually I have some of the same plants in these gardens as I do this one. So that will actually help me by not having so much harvest at one time. But it is not raining for just a brief moment. So here we go on garden tour, Saturday, June 20th, 2020. This is my garden space. And so we're gonna start here in the front. This is my strawberries. So if you um, saw my garden earlier in the season, I did move these here, um, but they seem to be rerooting really well. Nobody seems over shocked by the move. Um, and probably I will transplant these sunflowers and add some more strawberries. Strawberries, you guys can hear the thunder. <laughs> strawberries are things that come back year after year if you take care of them well. We'll top this off with topsoil for this year, but this is more of a tour than an explanation. So guys, I can't wait for these sunflowers to bloom. And and I hope they do this week because we're going on vacation. And so I know they will definitely bloom in the next two weeks. So got some sunflowers, some marigolds. Those are push pull plants. We can talk more about that. Um, and then over here on this side, this guy might be the first one to bloom. Like he's so, he, she's, I mean, he, she, whatever she is, she's ready. Um, this is Justice's kale. She transplanted over here. My OCD is just gonna let that go. Um, these are two, the update on my tomatoes that I did from the suckers on my bigger tomatoes. This one's doing a little bit better than that one. Um, and then these are my griller zucchinis. So I talked about how I put these here. Um, see how they're a little different shape? They're gonna be kind of like a little ball shape. Those are called griller zucchinis. And these plants are getting a lot more sun and they're growing a lot bigger than the ones that I got in the same container that are over in one of these beds. And I'll show that one to you as well. Here is garden bed. We're gonna start at the beginning because that's where I had been starting. <laughs> I'll get myself all confused on the wall, on the uh, updates when I look. So here she is from this angle, which is just insane to think about where it started. Um, so these here are all watermelon and watermelon really likes the heat. So we have bounced back and forth between hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold this year in Maryland. And so they're doing well, they're starting to vine, but they're not very big. Um, couple reasons, one is the sun comes up over here and so they get the last bit of morning sun and then they lose the afternoon sun the earliest as well. So next year I'll probably plant them further up so they get more sun. This is a um, pumpkin, I'm pretty sure. Isn't that cool? She's doing so well. I have not seen a lot of bugs on my pumpkins and squash, which is really exciting. So there's actually three of these in here. So this is one, two, and then this third one, um, her vine, I wasn't really able to pull it out. So I went ahead and staked it. Oh, garden tour foul number one. I just broke my stake. All right, so she's staked up there, except I just broke her, so I have to come back and fix that. Um, these are my zucchini. So like I said, these grillers in here are the same ones that were out front, and you can see they're so much smaller. Um, but these are my, um, I planted these from starts. So these will all be ready this week. One, two, three, four on this one. Ooh, some of these probably are ready. One, two, three, four, or five on this one. Also, we're gonna pick these pretty early so that it continues to produce throughout the summer. I don't want it to work so hard to make a huge zucchini that it doesn't keep putting flowers off. These are my eggplants, guys. These are just for Jason. None of us like eggplant, but look how cool this is. So they start as this little purple flower 
and then they turn into the eggplant. Isn't that awesome? So there's one back there. There is a bigger one here. So, so exciting. I literally bought the zucchini like on a whim. Like I was like, oh, let's try zucchini. I mean, let's try eggplant. Um, this one, I didn't even know how they grew. They look so awesome. So we've got four of that type and then we have three of the black beauties. This one is flowering. So this will be my first one that'll actually have um, fruit on it. This one needs some more sunlight. And there's one back here also that you can tell I'm just pulling foliage back even to see it. Because this guy, holy jamoles, this is my um, honey melon. No, 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 just kidding. These are a squash. Oh, I'm gonna pull it out here. This is my honey bear. I don't know why I said honey melon, but look how cute. So we've got baby honey bears. And so these so far have not gotten pollinated well. I have pulled several off um, from blossom rot. And so, which basically means they didn't get pollinated. So these are male flowers. You can tell because they don't have the fruit on the bottom. Um, and so hopefully tomorrow those male flowers will open in addition to these and we can do some hand pollination to make sure that some are actually growing. You can see, here's an example. Oh, there's a male flower that's open and this is a female over here. So hopefully a bee pollinated that today, but you can see like we've got a lot growing, but this one here, you can see it just pulled right off. So this one did not get pollinated because it's not growing. Um, so we just pull those off so that we don't get any bugs and we keep hoping for the best for that guy. This is my green beans. My green beans are almost to the top of the trellis. I'm, I don't know why, but I'm so excited to pull a green bean from over top of my head. That might seem silly, but I just, I'm so excited about it. Okay, these are my green beans. Um, and so they are growing up this side of the trellis and then a good transition to bed number two, they're growing up this side of the trellis. Now you can tell this, um, so I just have to come in here sometimes, like this is like a rogue green bean here. So I just come in and pull it up the trellis and make it happy so that it keeps growing. And when it has something to support it, it will grow faster. So that's why I come in here so much. So look, this is one of those zucchini grillers, the same one I showed you at the very beginning. And you can see it like hardly is big at all. So part of that is the sunshine and part of that is um, that those over there are getting a lot more space to grow. But we do have something exciting. Boom! There are some green beans growing. Super, super fun. So this is garden bed number two. Garden bed number two. And this guy has all kinds of surprises for us this week. Um, so I'm pretty certain that this is a pumpkin. Pretty certain that this is a pumpkin. And she's vining off all kinds of places. I'm trying to make sure I space out the vines. I intentionally put the beds like this and put her and the, the watermelon next to this big open space so that as they vined and went crazy, I would have space. So I intentionally planted those there. Um, but this is the surprising bed where I had to transplant things a couple times because of the frost. So a zucchini did sneak in there that's really not gonna vine, it's just gonna grow big. Um, so there is a zucchini in there. You can see that I've had a critter come eat some flowers. That's not, I don't think I pruned that. Maybe I did, but, um, and then you can see this is a zucchini growing, that's a baby. So there is a zucchini in there. These are um, gonna bloom and attract bees. Down here in the middle, they've actually really started to take off this week. These are lemon cucumbers. I've never seen them before. I saw them at the store and I thought they were adorable. So I'm hoping they're gonna vine right up that trellis. Um, but this week I've actually had to start pulling them in and out of the trellis and they've actually shown signs of vining, which is really exciting because I wasn't sure that they were gonna do anything. Um, and then this here, wait till you see how cute this is. Um, what? I'm, I mean, I don't know, this could be pumpkin, but I'm pretty sure it's the shape of a butternut squash but it could be a pumpkin, I don't know. Because remember what I said, this is just surprising. When Justice and I took pictures of the leaves, it said vining pumpkin. Um, but I'm not sure, if you guys know, let me know, but I'm not sure if a butternut squash is considered a pumpkin or what, but I just thought those are adorable. And there's a bunch of them in this bed. And I did start butternut squash, so you know, it's possible. 
Um, okay, so then these guys, I started growing up the trellis because they were just getting out of control. Um, and so you can see they are all the way to the top of the trellis. And there's another one of those little orange ones. That I think is a butternut squash, don't you think? Guys, it's gonna be so exciting to figure out what this stuff is. Um, so she's doing amazing. You can tell their little tentacles are just trying to hang on to something. So I try to come in here and just loop it around. Sometimes it'll even hang on to like itself as like a base. So I try to do that. So this guy is all the way to the top of the trellis. That was not true last week. This guy is all the way to the top of this trellis. I've actually started attaching multiple vines to that, to that one. You can see it's leaning a little to the side. And then these guys, I thought were going to be okay. Um, but in reality, probably what I'm going to have to do is find a way to attach them to this fence. And this, I know, is a spaghetti squash. Um, and so that's exciting. So there's a spaghetti squash in here. And then look, these ones are even bigger. How cute are these? They're so amazing. I, I'm just so excited by them. Um, look at the little tiny baby one. <laughs> so whatever these are, whether they're pumpkins or butternut squash or whatever, they're doing great. And so this one I also vined this week. I mean, not vined, um, put in a stake um, so it could be upright. So the stake helps with a lot of things. Um, one main thing is it helps keep the fruit off the ground. And then as you can see, it, these all will have blooms. And so in the morning when they're all open, they're very noticeable for the pollinators. Whereas when the vine is on the ground, all the foliage really covers up the flowers. And so that's a big reason I have been trying to put as many things vertical as possible um, so that I don't have to do as much like hand pollination. So this is a huge zucchini plant. You can tell that it's got some zucchini in there. Tomorrow morning, the girls will probably be picking a big handful of zucchini. You can see there's more growing down there. That's exciting. Um, I put a sunflower in here. Again, that's gonna be so pretty. And then these are um, mini watermelons that I'm growing. And again, they're not getting as much sunlight or heat as they like, but you can see this one is poking out. So he's gonna go this way and hopefully give me some watermelon. Now, this is basically for my area considered out of season. Um, these are peas and I planted them late and I didn't figure out their trellis situation until late. And so, but they are still growing. They're not yellow, they're not sad, but they're also not producing any buds. Like I don't see any um, pods of, of peas. So we're just kind of waiting and seeing with these. Um, I probably could take them down and plant some more cucumbers or something and let the cucumbers run up this trellis, but I'm going to give them a couple more weeks and see what happens. Um, worst case scenario, I can take them down and then let the watermelon run out here um, and give them some more light, which would be good. All right. One and two is done. On to number three. Guys, number three is busting at the seams. <laughs> this is number three. She gets good sun all day and we've had a lot of rain. Um, so these are pumpkins. There are quite a few in here. I probably only needed to put two and there's probably four or five. Um, it's easier to kind of show you from here. These are gonna be mini pumpkins. Um, and so they're gonna run up this gate. You can see they're kind of moving in and out, figuring out where to go, having some foliage come in and out. So those are gonna spill over. I intentionally did that because this is kale, lettuce, and then was cauliflower and broccoli. Cauliflower and broccoli are definitely out of season. I'm just growing these out for the chickens. Um, they'll love the leaves. But you can see where I planted it really close together. It just kind of came up as like little sprouts, which is great. But where I gave it some more room, this is actually a head of lettuce. And um, on the other side here, you can see that where I harvested I harvested lettuce last week and you can see that it's growing back in. So if you do this in the winter or in the fall, you can actually grow lettuce underneath like a, or where I live, where I'm gonna be able to put a hoop skirt either over this or over whatever bed I choose to grow in the winter. And I'll be able to grow this all winter. I'll just harvest it and then it'll grow back um, all winter long, which to me is way worth it. Um, especially with how fast lettuce goes bad um, in your, fridge. If you can grow it fresh and then just come grab it when you need it and then it replenishes itself, that just seems like a win all around for me. So this is basically, 
I'm gonna call this the tunnel of miracles. Guys, these tomato plants, I was for certain we're not going to make it. Hear me say, I planted these from seed and they looked pitiful. So, so pitiful. Um, I have been coming in here and pulling this zucchini plant off of them like almost every day trying to like prune and pull it over to the side so that they get fresh um, air and circulation. You can see I've pruned them down to one stalk from the bottom um, and they are starting to flower. So I'm pretty excited because I did not think any of those tomato plants were going to make it and they're in there growing. I did this this week. Um, again, this is more of like a kid sized tunnel when I do the renovations this fall and winter for next year's garden. I'm gonna be doing much bigger and sturdier trellises because way more things are vining than I thought. So if you look in here, I am, okay, sorry, had a kid yell at me. Um, this is a um, spaghetti squash, but it is a very, it's a big um, variety. It's different than the other spaghetti squash that I have growing. But you can see here, this might be a blossom rot situation. We're gonna give it some time um, to see if it grows, but it was growing so big that I needed to hook it to this trellis. So this is gonna grow up here and it's possible that it will spill over. That will mean that other animals will get to it. So I'm gonna try to keep it from spilling over. Um, but it is huge. So I actually have to walk around <laughs> because it's so ginormous. Uh, we're also growing, transplanted a sunflower here. We're also growing cucumbers here. And London came in today and did some pruning for me of cucumbers that really looked sad, like this one, um, that weren't getting what they needed because I want the energy of the plant to be going towards... Um, these guys who are growing nice and growing up. I want it to grow up. And so I don't want it to focus any energy on ones that are not doing very well. This spaghetti squash plant that I told you is so amazing and growing huge actually <laughs> is starting to vine up this as well. This was supposed to be a sole cucumber trellis and it will not. It will have like five things on it by the time the season is over. Um, so this one you can tell again, I just go in here when I see it kind of bushing out and I can push it back into the trellis and let it grow. Um, so that's growing spaghetti squash. We eat a lot of spaghetti squash. It is a substitute for us um, and our health journey a lot for um, some of the pasta dishes that our kids like. Um, so I'm excited for when this starts. You can see one in here for when this starts really producing. And then hidden here in the miracle, in the miracle tunnel is my um, ground cherry tomatoes which grow in these cute little lanterns, which nobody can see because I have so much foliage <laughs> in this garden. <laughs> it's crazy. I might have just tomatoes in a, in a bed next year. Um, I did not really understand how much growth comes from one little seed. So these are also cucumbers. Um, oh, we're gonna move it on to the next bed. Um, I was getting a little carried away. All right, this is bed number four. Last one, again, one that's exploding. Um, transplanted some sunflowers. These are my cilantro that's bolting. And so I'm gonna let it bolt so that I can get the seeds from this to transplant, I mean, to replant cilantro in the fall. Also, um, something I learned was that the seeds of cilantro is the herb corion. I think I'm saying that right. I might be saying it wrong, who knows. So what we have here is honey melon that we just trellised this week. Um, I think I did a little stories about it, but we trellised the honey melon this week and it is doing way, way, way better. Um, you can see I experimented with this one before I put this trellis up and just the amount of exposure that they're now getting to the sun because they're going up, things are doing a lot better. You can tell this little one here, he's trying to, he's trying to run away, um, but he's not trellis and you can see how much smaller his leaves are than these ones that are getting um, sunlight, air, all that kind of stuff. These are my um, green peppers. No idea how they're doing. I'm not a green pepper expert. Um, I mean, there's green peppers growing in there, so hopefully they're doing good and their leaves don't have a lot of holes. So I don't think, I mean, this one's got a couple, um, but I don't think they're being attacked by bugs. So I think so far we're doing good. <laughs> the honey melon and then these are my kooka melons which are mini watermelons and i cannot wait to see one of these i'm really really excited so i think they're doing okay 
look. Can you see it? It's growing. It's growing a mini watermelon. This is amazing. <laughs> Okay, so my cucamelons are in here. Again, they are something that's vining. So they're something that I come in here and kind of feed in and out of the trellis um, when I come out in the morning. Look, there's another one. Ah, this is exciting. Look at all the little ones. As soon as I knew what I was looking for, I I've never grown these, so I didn't know what I was looking for. And now that I know what I'm looking for, <clears throat> they're popping up everywhere. That'll preach, guys. When you know what you're looking for, you can find it everywhere. Um, so these are more cucumbers can see here London will have some cucumbers to pick in the morning she likes to do that and so then come around here and this is my spaghetti squash look at that guys so this is why we trellis so you see it's sitting on the trellis it could be hanging down it's just how it grew but it is completely off the ground completely protected not that an insect can't get to it but way less likely. And so this is gonna give it a good chance to get nice and big and ripe without any bugs attaching it or attacking it. Also, this um, spaghetti squash is just so amazing and slightly aggressive and getting so much sunlight that it decided to climb up this trellis. <laughs> so this is not cucumber here at the top. This is spaghetti squash here at the top. And looks like there's a bug in there. Uh oh, do we think it's a good bug or a bad bug? I don't want it to fall on my face. Um, but so you can see there's some more spaghetti squash coming in there. There's one here. Um, so again, this spaghetti squash is gonna do really well because now it's at the, now basically these flowers are at the highest point of the garden. And so they are gonna be hopefully attracting some more pollinators to our garden because, whoa, it fell. There it is. <laughs> it didn't fall on my head though. Um, because hopefully it's gonna do that. So isn't that cool? So once these reach the top, there hopefully be cucumbers falling from the sky and then um, spaghetti squash falling from the sky. If they grow on top of the trellis, I'm, I didn't even think about that. I'm going to need a ladder to get them. <laughs> um, all right, so we got we're, we got sun coming out, guys. This is amazing. All right, just because I saw it. <laughs> I get to, I'm probably going to not be very great at like being super efficient on these tours because I'm definitely going to get distracted by things that need to be done that I didn't see in the morning. Um, okay, so spaghetti squash, spaghetti squash. This is actually my cucumber plant loving this area as well. So this is telling me a couple things for next year. Um, one is that whatever I grow on the front two ends of this bed um, probably should be a little bit shorter so that the plants further in the bed can benefit. Like this would probably grow the same way if it was on the end and trellised over to the other bed. Um, and then I could walk through trellises when I come into the garden, which my aesthetic self makes me feel really happy inside. Um, but there's another spaghetti squash. So that just, I think would be a way to let the plants that really need a lot of sun and a lot of heat be here, like tomatoes or peppers or things like that. And then let these things kind of like this one's doing, except it would grow, it would trellis over into that bed. Um, or I might even have to put a thin bed down the middle and do a trellis to there and then a trellis to the other side. All of this building makes me so excited. All right, last little strip here. This is a butternut squash. So I know this is a butternut squash because I planted it from seed and I remember. So I'm excited to have this set fruit and then we can kind of decide if we think the stuff over there is pumpkin or butternut squash. <laughs> um, and then this again is another butternut squash, which this flower does look like the flowers. Um, that are over there. So it's possible, but I definitely know those are butternut squash um, and they are vining. These guys are vining as well. And at the moment, I can't even remember what these are. These might be more spaghetti squash because I might've planted them. I'm just pulling these yellow leaves so that we don't get bugs or disease down at the bottom of the plant. Um, these also might be spaghetti squash because I think I thought, oh, these will be ready first. And then I'll need some to like finish out the season. Guys, I'm going to have a lot. <laughs> Let me tell you, a lot of spaghetti squash. Because I think, I know I started it from seed and I know those did really well. So did my pumpkins. And then I think I planted more from seed once the garden started going. So I think spaghetti squash is going to be a main course this winter <laughs> or this fall. Um, I'm just pulling some of these in and out of here so that they can cover 
the full area of the trellis and not just this one corner. Okay guys, so there we have it. This is Saturday, June 20th, and this is what we've got so far right now. I feel like things are progressing really well. Um, we do have some fall things um, that we're gonna be able to plant soon that are gonna be more of like winter and fall harvest. So I know I just thought of this idea during the tour, but putting a really thin, tall bed in the middle here so that I can do one, two, three, four, and then I could have uh, five, six. That would give me six arching trellises in this small space and would really magnify what I can plant. And then I could even arch from here to the fence um, and then maybe put another bed here and then these things could vine. Anyways, all that's very exciting. I like building and creating even though this is sitting here growing. So I hope you guys enjoyed the garden tour. The sun came out, which is glorious. You guys, I totally and completely didn't show you any tomatoes. <laughs> the garden tour can't be complete without tomatoes. Um, so these are my tomatoes. They are starting to flower and set fruit, which is super exciting. My cherry tomatoes are definitely setting fruit. You can see some down there, super adorable. Um, these are some bigger ones that are starting to ripen, which is also exciting. So these are my tomatoes that I um, bought all from Starts. Um, and then the ones that I was super excited about over there are the ones that I started from seed. So there she is. And I'm trying to see, that might be the only huge spaghetti squash I have going. Sometimes there's some, oh, there's one hiding. There's another spaghetti squash. I'm gonna be the spaghetti squash girl at some point this summer because this is crazy. This is an example I can show you of um, blossom rot. So I'll have to kind of jump in there and clip those out tomorrow, but you can see how ones that are growing look amazing. Um, and these ones didn't get pollinated very well.